Blender is not precise. If you've heard that before, then this video is for you. How's it going? I'm Sasha, and in this video I'm going to show you the best ways to use Blender for precision modeling as you would need it for architectural visualizations, cabinet and furniture, mechanical design and even 3D printing. And the best part? You don't have to spend a dime on add-ons. I'm going to show you how to set up Blender with the right units, how to move and size objects precisely, how to use precise snapping methods, and how to get measurements from your model. Plus, at the end, I'm going to show you how to move something that doesn't have a move option. So stick around for that one. And now let's see if this sounds familiar. Say you're early in your Blender journey and you plan to use it for ArcVis or design. Then you might have come across comments like these. All is needed is easy access to measurements and object dimensions. Blender makes those things impossible, very difficult. Modeling for woodworking or manufacturing in Blender sounds like a nightmare to me. For sure other softwares that are meant for precision are better than Blender at it. If you're building things with a view to manufacture, then Blender isn't the best choice. So as it turns out, there is a common misconception in the world of 3D programs that Blender out of the box is not useful when it comes to precision modeling and you should use CAD for that. I'm not sure where that comes from exactly. Maybe it's from early days when Blender wasn't as evolved as it is now. It's, I don't know. I honestly do not know. However, I totally disagree with it. And that's because I use Blender every day for precision modeling. I'm a cabinet maker by trade. I have my own company and I design all my projects right in Blender before I build them. And I extract all my measurements right out of Blender and it hasn't failed me yet. And I don't use any add-ons either. I've tried a couple, but I always found myself going back to the built-in Blender functionalities and add-ons and anything I bought just ended up somewhere in the file folder and stays deactivated. Before we start though, a quick disclaimer, it is important to note that Blender and CAD software take a very different approach to modeling, uh, where Blender is polygon based, uh, CAD software would be math based or NURBS based. So if you're coming over from a CAD software, it is expected that Blender workflow is very different from CAD and each have their own benefits and limitations, but we'll focus on Blender for today. So let's jump into Blender and get started. So let's start with an empty scene and first let's set up Blender for the units we want to use. For that we have to go over here into our scene properties and there under units we'll find what we need. We can use either metric or imperials and they go anywhere from micrometers to kilometers. So Imperial is also an option and there you can choose anywhere from thou to miles. Personally, I like working with real numbers, so I choose metric and millimeters. And I'm not going to touch the scale, I'm going to leave it at one where it is. Um, depending on what you choose, you can choose to separate the units. I usually don't do it, I just leave everything at millimeters and that's how I work. So that is the first important step. With this done, let's bring in a simple cube, shift A, mesh cube. And for starters, we want to look at some basic moving options. So of course, if we hit G, we can arbitrarily move that thing around in 3D space wherever we want to, which is not very precise, but depending on the project you do, it might just do the trick. So let's undo that. And we can tell Blender to move the object in either of the three axes by a specific amount. So let's move it along on the Y axis by three meters. For that, we go G, Y, 3000, because I'm in millimeters. Another option would be if we go into orthographic view, we can snap the cube to this grid. If you go look up here, you can see right now the grid would be one meter. And if you zoom in a little closer, it goes to centimeters and then to millimeters, depending on how far you zoom in. Because we have it set to millimeters, it will stop there. 
So you could activate your snapping here and then hit G and it would automatically snap or you just have it set to increment. And after you hit G, you just hold control and that will snap it to the grid too. Should you find yourself a little off and not exactly on the grid, you can always toggle absolute grid snap. And then when you start moving it, it will snap it back to the total grip. Personally, I don't use that very often because I find once a scene gets a little complex, you're basically all over the place and you'll have to start counting squares and I don't find it very convenient to be honest. So I rarely ever use the grid snap. There is the occasional situation, but I rarely ever use it. So let's get the cube back onto the origin. Alt G resets the position. Now another snapping option would be snapping it precisely to an object. So let's duplicate our cube here and move it along the x-axis. And since Blender 4.0, we can actually tell Blender where we want to start snapping. So I hit G and then on the very bottom, you can see all these options here along the bottom edge. And one of them is B for snap base. So before I move the cube anywhere, I hit B and I can tell Blender from where I want to snap. It can snap from a vertex or from an edge or even the edge center. Note the different symbols that appear on it. So let's say I want to snap this corner to this edge center. I can go click on this corner and then move it over here and snap it to where I want it. In this case, this edge center. And since that was introduced, it has become a lot more like a cat program. It's, it's a lot better snapping. And you can just continue with that wherever you want. You can move this up on the Z axis and then GB and take this center edge and move it to this vertex. And that way you can snap it precisely to whichever point on a different object you want it. So let's get rid of these once again and reset the location. So as a quick recap, you can move any object on any given axis by constraining it to it and typing in an exact amount. And that way you have your precision movement and you can snap any object to a different object by hitting B after you initiate the movement and choose your snap base. Now, the other important thing for precision is of course the size of any object. Now, if we look at our cube and have it active, we can go up here under item in the end panel. By the way, if you don't see it, you can hit either N to open it or hit that little arrow here and pull it out. So we go under item and then here under transform, we see the location, the rotation, the scale and the dimensions of the cube. Here under dimension, we can enter any amount we want to give, in this case, the cube, the size we want. And we can even use any unit that we want because Blender will just convert it to whatever we set as a default here in the units tab. If I want it to be three meters on the X axis, I can just type three M and it will change that automatically to whatever unit we have specified under the units tab over here. It'll even go from imperial to metric. So let's say I want seven feet on the Y axis. It will do that and convert it automatically to millimeters. It can even do on the Y axis, let's say six and a half feet. So let's say six foot five. That's not half. That's how Imperial works. Yeah. Whatever. Six foot five. It converts that. It can even do more math, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, when you do this from here, it will size the object proportionally from its origin, meaning 
that little dot over here. So if that origin was on the bottom face here, it would just change the dimension upwards if you scale it on the Z axis. So when we size our object in object mode over here, it is important to note that the scale is not uniform anymore, meaning it's not one, one, one anymore. Scale in Blender is a multiplier or a percentage. And if we don't have that uniform, that would impact how some modifiers work. And once we get to the edge length display and measurements, they would not display correctly. So we have to apply the scale after we change the dimensions in object mode. And we do that by control A, apply scale. Now the scale is uniform again, and we can go ahead. Now let's move this over a little, GX, and duplicate this. And I'm gonna all G back to the origin. And let's collapse this by going into edit mode and make sure we're on vertex select, either clicking up here or going one. And then we're gonna hit M and merge at center. And that will leave us with one vertex right at the origin right now. And with that, we can start making a simple drawing. So let's go into top view by hitting the tilde key and then go in on top or hit seven on your number key. And let's start drawing it out a little. First, I'm gonna move it over a little so it is not right on the Y axis line. So we actually see it. So let's select our vertex and hit E to extrude Y. And let's just do some random numbers. Uh, three, six, five, five. Now we have extruded it on the Y axis exactly by 3,655 millimeters. So let's go E, X, uh, one eight nine seven, and followed by E Y two three seven eight E X four thousand thirty three E Y minus 3547. Now let's head back. E X minus 933. And so far we've been working with total numbers, but we can get more precise than that. So let's hit E Y and go minus 1090.3278. And this one will get important in a little bit. Now from here, we want to branch off by one meter, but we want to rotate it by 28 degrees. How do we do that? So first extrude it on the Y axis by 1000 millimeters. So now we're going to select the previous vertex hit shift S and cursor to select it. This will place our 3D cursor right at that vertex. So now we're gonna go up here and change the pivot point to 3D cursor, select our last vertex, hit R to rotate and 28. And that will rotate this by exactly 28 degrees from this line. And from there, I think we're just gonna connect the last two. So I'm gonna select the last one and the first one and just hit F to fill. And I'm gonna change my pivot point back to medium point for later and get Nah, I can leave that there actually. So now we have a nice, nice little drawing. So where can Blender do math for you? Well, it's called the advanced mode 
and you can enter it anytime you move, scale, or rotate an object. And you can enter it by hitting the equal symbol right after you hit G. So let's just add a cube here. Add a cube. Oh, I still haven't moved the origin. So let's hit Alt G. Also hit Shift S to move the cursor to world origin. And let's move it along the axis by some random value. So hit G, X, and then the equal. And that opens up a function up here. So now you can enter any value in any unit and add it and subtract it and multiply it however you want. And Blender will do the math for you and move the object by the result. So let's just do 1M plus 2 foot 7 inches multiplied by 33 centimeters. Don't ask me who, who would ever do that. I don't know. But let's just roll with it. So you can see up here the resulting value. So now you, see, you hit enter. And then if you open up the panel here, you can see it has moved the object actually by 1668.3 mm millimeters. This is how precise Blender can be. And this is not just for objects. You can also do that in edit mode with vertices or edges or faces. So you could hit G Y equals seven feet. I don't know why I always use seven feet, but whatever, plus five centimeters. Of course it moved that in the wrong direction now, but you get the gist. So the advanced mode does all the math for you. So whatever you're working with, whatever, if you get a drawing with all kinds of different dimensions and values, let Blender do the math for you. Let's delete this cube again and get back to our drawing. Now you can also change the size of just an edge. Let's say you want to change the size of our topmost edge here. Let's go into edge select mode. You want to change the size of this one. Uh, you can do that with a little add-on that is already built into Blender. It's just not activated. So if you go under edit preferences, add-ons, and you type in edit mesh tools and you toggle this little hook here. Then you can go into edit on the end panel and you see under mesh tools, you have all these new options. So here under edge tools, there is an option called set edge length. If you open that, you can see that the current length of that, that edge is 4,033 millimeters. And we can give it the target length and say we want it 5,000 millimeters. Now we're gonna leave the mode on fixed. And for right now, we leave the size behavior on proportional. There's three options here, proportional, clockwise, and counterclockwise. Um, so let's leave it at proportional and hit okay. So now we can see in our little panel here that the edge now has 5,000 millimeter, millimeter length. Let me just get my screencast keys out of the way there so you can see that better. And because we left it on proportional, it has resized the edge in both directions equally. We can also tell it to just do it in one direction by either clockwise or counterclockwise. But let's leave it at proportional for now. There, there is a lot more options in this Mesh Tools add-on, and that might be a topic for a different video, but for now, let's leave it at the edge length. At this point, we know how to precisely move and size any object in Blender, but you have this drawing now, and you want to know what are the dimensions here exactly of each edge. So let's look at solving this issue next. 
because on a complex mo man model the n panel dimensions don't help anymore right now for this it would give you these numbers and that's basically just the bounding box of this model so let's first look at our measure tool here in the toolbar over on the left side and activate it and right now you don't see anything yet because we have to click and then drag it out to where we want to measure now i'm going to delete that one and to make it more precise and not just try to somewhat hit a corner roughly and then measure over we can activate its own snapping mode by just simply hitting control so hold control and then it will snap to edges edge centers and corners so let's click here and drag to the other one and let it go and with that we know that this edge is 1897 millimeters now if we wanted to measure the next one over we should do that from the other corner first because when you try to grab this corner here you likely end up just changing that measurement so you would go from this corner and drag down here and because we got this angle now here you can see that it goes to two digits after the decimal point that's how precise that one is it can also give you angles remember this one we made at 28 degrees here so we want to have this angle now which should be 152 degrees so let's go from this point to this point and in order to get the angle we need a third point so we just click and drag hold control until we hit, hit that corner and now it shows us the 152 degrees but not the length anymore so there we, there is one of the drawbacks with this tool that right now if we wanted to have the actual measurement of that line we're in trouble so it's good it, this tool is good for some things but it's not the greatest of them all plus the other drawbacks are that once you go back into select mode or any other mode just deselecting the measure tool the measurements disappear and if you were to move one of the vertices that you measured from and then go back into your measuring tool the measurement doesn't move along with that vertex so let's undo that so that's why this tool is just it, ha it it's okay but it has drawbacks also it, the limit is two two digits after the decimal point so if you want it more precise then you need to use other options so let's delete these ones here another useful tool would be the edge length overlay which we can activate up here in the mesh edit mode overlays by clicking on edge length now whenever you select an edge it will display its length and it will also display its connected edges lengths when you start moving an edge which is extremely helpful if you do edge loops and want to have them at a specific point so if we go to our cube here for example i'm going to x-ray mode to see better and i do an edge loop in the middle it will display the connected edges and I can precisely move them to wherever I want and if I hold shift it'll be even more precise because it moves slower. Now the drawback of this is let me get, just get rid of this one too. Um, this tool unfortunately only displays total values and nothing after the decimal so you might run into rounding errors um, at this point you have to decide how small do you and how precise you actually need it um, personally i use this tool all the time and for me millimeters is enough if you need it more precise than that then this tool might not be perfect for you but you can have it even smaller 
And for that, let's turn these off again, otherwise it gets a little confusing. For that, we have to add one more add-on, which is already built into Blender. And it's called Measure It. So we'll activate the Measure It add-on. And now, under View, we'll find that under Measure It tools. So let's click on Show, because otherwise it won't display anything. And then we can go into Edit Mode, select two vertices, and hit Segment. Now by default, it's set to meters, but we can change the unit right here in that little panel. So let's change it to millimeters. And here you can also adjust the precision if you want just total numbers or up to five. And there you can see some rounding errors that occur. I think this is the edge that we change proportionally, so that's, that might be why. You can also hide the measurement unit. And under this little gear icon here, you can change the automatic position and change the position to where you want it specifically in all directions. You can change the offset. And if you have multiple measurements, you can even add them to a group. And Blender will then add and sum up everything that is in this group. And with this precision here, let's set it to three. We can go to our special edge here and give that a segment. And now you can see that it displays exactly what we put in. So again, you can change the precision up to five. And again, it is up to you how precise you really need it. I usually just use full values because for me, a total millimeter value is enough. Nevertheless, it's very much possible to be this precise in Blender. And now if I add this measurement to group A2, expand it here and give that group A2, you can see that it's now calculating those two together. And that goes with the same precision. So you can take, take values off or add them. So let's delete the group. This is a handy thing though, when you do, for example, a takeoff on edge length that you need for, for a job. That's how I use it. I just take all the edges and let it sum up and it gives me the, the amount of edge length I have to order. Um, this tool can also do angles with three points. Now, the funny thing about it is you can't just select three points and hit angle. It doesn't work. It's almost like it needs to register three clicks and then it gives you the angle which is 152 degrees right there there it has the same precision as everything else you can also do arc so let's say we fill it or bevel a corner over here by hitting ctrl b and let's say 1500 is our radius what happened Control B. Oh, it's a vertex. Control Shift B. 1500. And I'm going to give this 10 segments by using the offset option for the width type. I'm getting a precise radius of 1500 millimeters. And then I can go into here and select my two outer vertices and one in the middle and click on arc. And it gives me the radius, the length and the angle, and I can display whatever I need. If I just need the radius, I just do the radius. Or if I also need a length, I can always display that too, or an angle. Um, the great advantage of this tool is, first and foremost, it's visible in object mode too, and it stays there, even if you select a different object, unless you hit hide, then it disappears. But if you click show again, it'll be still there. There's also this little, little uh, gear icon. 
the ghost icon, I mean. And that way, it'll only display the measurements for the selected object. So you have a lot of options with it. The other advantage is that if you change something about your mesh and you have a segment on that edge, for example, this one here, and you start moving it around, it will stick to it. It will adjust the measurement with it. So that's a great advantage. And you can even measure the distance between objects. So let's say we have our cube here. And then we select our drawing. And I can recommend using some vertices too. So let's select this vertex and this vertex. And then you hit link. It'll give you the distance between these two vertices. If you don't select the vertex, it'll use the object origins to measure from one object to the other. And you can also measure how far the object is from the world origin by hitting origin. Because we have that vertex active right now, it will measure from there. And if I deselect that vertex and do that again, it'll measure from the object origin to the world origin. So this will give you a lot of options to pre precisely measure how big your object is, how big certain elements of an object are, and where it is compared in comparison to, to other objects and the world origin too. Now let's get rid of some of these here. Just to make it a little more clear here, I'm also gonna get rid of my annotation here. And remember how I earlier said that I'm gonna show you how to move an object that doesn't have a move object option? Well, I'm talking about the 3D cursor. The 3D cursor, you can't select it. You can toggle it here, but it doesn't have a move option. You can place it in different spaces but you don't you can't just hit g and say move it on the x-axis by set amount so let's get it back to the world origin and let's look at our drawing here and pretend it's some floor plan some imaginary floor plan and let's say you want to have support columns in there and one of them is going to be exactly centered between this vertex and this vertex. Now, how, you, how would you get it there? Well, we'll select, this is the easy one. We'll select these two vertices, hit Shift S, and then cursor to select it. And Blender will place your cursor precisely in the middle between these two vertices. And there you can, let's just add a circle with I don't know, 450 millimeter radius. Just arbitrary right now. Now that is the easy part. But now let's say you want to have a, a support column somewhere here and it's not centered between two vertices precisely. But what you do know, because you have plans or whatever, let's say you know the column is going to be 1,850 millimeters on the y-axis and 2,765 millimeters on the x-axis from this point. Now, how do you get there? So first, let's select this vertex and get the cursor right there. Cursor to select it. Now, you can find the current location of the 3D cursor. If you go under View, and 3D cursor, it tells you the precise location in 3D space. And we can do math here too. So we know we wanna go up on the Y axis by 1850. So let's go Y axis, click in here and deselect the text so you don't erase it. And just add plus 1850. 
And now we want to move it on the x-axis by 2765. So we do the same thing here. Plus 2765. Boom. And now you have moved the 3D cursor with precise dimensions, even though it doesn't have a move option. And that way you can also place it anywhere in 3D space if you know exactly where you want to be. Let's say your, your floor plan has one corner in the world origin and you know the dimensions where you want to place something based off the world origin. You can type in the precise dimensions in your location and the 3D cursor will move right there. That is a handy trick to know. So to recap, we've looked at how to precisely move objects in 3D space with precise amounts. We've looked at snapping and how to use the snap base. We've looked at how to precisely size an object and edit our meshes and then display our measurements to the precision degree we need. So I hope with this overview I've demonstrated to you that Precision modeling in Blender is indeed very much possible. And as I mentioned, I use it every day. I use it for complex cabinet projects. And so far they've always fit perfectly once I've installed it. And I don't use any external add-ons at all. There are add-ons out there, especially for, for mechanical design. They're supposedly very good, like Cat Sketcher, but I don't use them, so I can't really comment on it. But with that being said, let me know in the comments below if there was any tools that I've missed or if this was helpful to you to be more precise in Blender and please consider giving it a, a thumbs up. It would mean a lot to me and help others maybe discover precision modeling. And I encourage you to try it out yourself and hopefully next time you see a comment about Blender not being precise, you can easily dismiss that comment and maybe point them to this video so they can see for themselves that it's actually really possible. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. So long and thanks for all the fish.